shall be saved. Whatever that we, we believe that will stand forever will be darkened. It will turn to blood. It will inside damaging us and it will be cursed to us. Whatever that we believe that will be beneficial will be another disaster towards our life. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So Pastor Zhang today said, God's interest is evangelism. When everyone dying, he wants to save them because he created them. When everyone is suffering, he wants to bless them. He wants to be, be with them. Even in a time they don't look for God, God does look for them and he's asking them and Urgently speaking to them, return to me, return to me. And my desire is I desire to be with you and that I desire you to be with me. Therefore, God's interest is on someone who hold on to evangelism. As their covenant. God's looking for a person who holds on to evangelism as he or as his or her covenant because he knows evangelism is is everything this is what God cares the most he wants to attach a person to you, to a person who holds on to the evangelism as their covenant. When the sun turned to dark and the moon turned to blood, when there is disaster, curses, when everyone suffers, God wants to be with you. You can come back so he desired to be with you. So he came to you and he desired to save all. So he told you and he, tell, he tells everyone, call on the name of the Lord. So repent. Repentance for what? Joel chapter 2 verse 13. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And he, relent, he relents over disasters. Rend your hearts and not your garments. There are really few that they would rend their hearts and their garments for the sake of the gospel. There are a lot that they would rend their gar garments and their hearts for the sake of their own benefit, their own life. But there are really few who would rend their hearts and rend their garments for what God cares. And I desire all our remnants and all our multi-ethnic groups and all our 237 nation members to come to rend your hearts and also rend your garments. For evangelism. If evangelism doesn't really take place, I pray that it would bother you. Bother you so much that you don't want to do anything, you don't want to eat anything, you don't want to play anything because evangelism doesn't really take place. You know, there are times we are so stressed out because things not taking place. So are you stressed out when evangelism doesn't really take place? But we don't really care about evangelism. So may you repent and return to the Lord because you were away. You're away from God's interest. I know I'm at the church. I come to worship. I give offering. But are you with God? Return to the Lord. Because I'm not with Him. Return to the Lord and repent because I was away.
away from God's word. He's keep telling me, this is my desire. This is my will. I really want to save all the world. I want to raise summit and healing system. I want to change and save the church. I want to raise remnants to be the frontier for the kingdom of God. So he let you, he invited you guys into his covenant. But now we don't listen to his word. Rarely, rarely, maybe once a week, we listen to the word. So we return to the Lord by listening to his word. Every day. We rarely pray, so we return to the Lord because we were away, away from prayer. Return to the Lord because we were away, away from evangelism. At the same time, this is what God desires. He wants you to be with Him. He wants you to listen to His word. He wants you to pray. He wants you to save. At the same time, this is what we desire. What we desire might be money, might be better clothes, might be better house, and that we may rent our garments, rent our hearts for such physical blessing, for all the materials that we want to possess, but not for God's sake. We want to receive answers, but many times we try to avoid the answers that God has prepared for us. Think about Joseph. What is Joseph's blessing and Joseph's answer that God has allowed him? God has given him the answer to go to slavery. But, if, but what if Joseph accepted slavery as a problem of his life and he just keep praying to God, God, let me be out of these problems. God gave him slavery as the answer, but now that I consider that as my problem, so I'm trying to run away from the answer and answer is right there. Irene, come here. Oh, Irene, come here. Uh, visualize. Visual instructions is always very uh, effectful, effectful, right? Effective. This is my wife that God has prepared before the creation, right, David? This is your wife God has prepared for rest of your life, right? And now when David saw her, no way. God, she can't be my wife. No, no. And Irene, same thing. Lord, oh my God. David, um, he can be. But this is what God has prepared for you. But now you don't like it. You don't want it. This is not the thing that you have dreamed of. So what you do is now that you consider it as problems. It bothers you. It irritates you. So what you're praying to God is, God, I need an answer of my life. Let me be away from my problems. So you're running away. Here you're dating all. And you're looking for someone out here where God has not prepared nothing. When God has prepared everything in her. This is how we are missing the answers. We are avoiding the answer. God has called Joseph to slavery as the answer. But now I'm praying, God, I don't want to be in slavery. I don't want to be here. So let's say he ran away from slavery, so he came back to his dad, Jacob. Do you say that's the answer? Do you say that's how God guides you? No, that's why we're saying curse. Joseph received another answer. He came to jail. He came back to jail, but now that he doesn't like it, it's, it's not beneficial at all. I feel oppressed. I feel stressed. I'm so stressful. So now, leaving the answer that God has prepared and running towards where I believe God has prepared. This is how much we fill the gap in between God and me. If God is right there, 
I'm right here. Here I rent my garments, rent my heart, and I cry every single day and ask God, God, what is your answer that you prepare for me? You know what God is telling you? Come back to me. Come back where you are. Thank you. Come back where you are. Listen, pray, and here God has prepared a plan for evangelism. We want to evangelize every day. I know all of you, whoever listened to the message, have soul, have a heart to save someone. But if you are running away from where you are, where are you going to receive your answers? If you're running away from your reality, God has permitted Where do you expect to receive answers? If problems are there for you to receive answers and problems are there and it is disguised as problems when it is really the answer that God has allowed for you. But now that you're running away from God's presence, you're not listening to Him, you're not praying, you don't even care about God's interests and saying, God, I want the answer in my life. I have offered a lot. Nowadays, I'm giving a lot of tithe and thanksgiving offering. I'm serving church. You know, Pastor John today says, we believe in Jesus and we are saved, yet we don't live by Jesus. What does that mean? We believe in Jesus. He saved us. But church is not. We don't do church. We don't run the church in the name of Jesus. I serve church, but not in the name of Jesus. I run for evangelism, but not in the name of Jesus. I use my efforts. I use my ideology. I I impute all the elements and knowledge of the world into the church. And we try to run the church just like another business. So church has become another business for your life. This is just another habit that I would spend my time, I would spend with my friends. And this is just another habit. I would just come maybe once a week for such comforts in order to gain peace. But we don't leave our walk of faith for the sake of the kingdom of God. I have seen few leaving their walk of faith for the sake of God. They would rent their garments, rent their hearts for the sake of the kingdom of God, not for themselves. Does it bother you when you cannot listen to the word of God? Does it bother you when you cannot pray? It's not you don't pray, you cannot. It's not you don't listen, you cannot. It's not you don't evangelize, you cannot. And does it bother you that you cannot enjoy what God has prepared for you? Everyone is dying. When I stand, Psalm chapter 73, verse 22, when I found myself, I was just like a brutish and ignorant. I was just like a beast before God. That's a psalmist's confession. He was literally just like a brutish, brutish, ignorant, And a beast to God. All I care is what to eat, what to drink. All I care is what to wear when everyone is dying. Coronavirus, riots, protests, another virus. People are saying second waves are coming. But what I care, how much am I going to make? What am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? We were just like a beast before God. When God is fulfilling his covenant through you, in you, by you, we were acting just like a beast. We are raising our condition. And we are asking, we are telling God, I know, God, this is your covenant, but look at my condition. We are making our condition as such excuse for not holding on to the gospel, for not evangelize. We have thousand reasons for not sharing the gospel. 
Just for example, one of our remnants having tutor. He goes to tutor every single day. I asked him, why aren't you evangelizing your tutor? You know what? He has excuse. Because I'm there to study. God, you're there for evangelism. You're there to pray to God. When you're at work, listen to God's voice. What is he saying to you? Everyone is dying. Uh, one of my uh, co, uh, one of my friends, uh, his friend of mine, uh, he's another pastor. He has friends. She makes. He told me how she makes forty four uh, ten thousand dollars a month. I mean twenty thousand dollars a month. She's not married because she feels there's no need to get married. And she was always rich. She was always enjoying. Uh, whenever she throws her birthday party, it's not like a birthday party with a little cake. They're, they're, they're renting a building to invite a lot of people with money, and they're enjoying their birthday party. And he was, used to be one of them. When he became pastor, he doesn't make as much as he made before, so he's not going along with them anymore. One day... She was disappeared. And one day, they found out, he found out she was dead. And one day, he found out she committed suicide. And you know how she committed suicide? She was at her apartment by herself. And when she disappeared, no one can contact her. So no one couldn't, no one couldn't, I mean, people call her, but she never answered the phone. So they came to her house. She was just crying over at her balcony. And she was telling her friends how this demon dragging her hair like this to the balcony and keep telling her, jump off, jump off, jump off. And she actually later, she literally jumped off and she committed suicide. She died. Guys, people are dying. It's not just funny thing. Oh, my friend's taking ADHD medicine. They're taking another depression, uh, medicine for depression. And they're taking this medicine for whatever. You're taking medicine because you're abnormal. People who's normal not taking medicine. Everyone's dying. Yet nowadays, abnormal becomes what is normal. People became slaves to Satan. Do they know? They do not. Does anyone teach them? No one. Can they learn by themselves from any textbook? Never. Because nothing tells them their identity. Idol worship. What is idol worship? It's having a, having a relationship with the demon. Become a participant of the work of the Satan. And they are literally idol worshiping and... This is what is so funny about Christians. Their idol worship, we know as Christians something that we should not worship, but many Christians envy of their idols that they made. They're envy of their idols that they worship. They want the money they have. They want the house they have. And Christians walk their walk of faith for their idols. And here they, they're making their own culture and we are just diving into their culture. We're swimming there. And we, if we are gaining much, here we're saying, wow, Jesus is a Christ answer to all. Finally, I get to be free in this culture of the world that they created. This is how people are dying. Because it is idol worship, they are meant to suffer mental problems. Study cannot grant you true peace. Education cannot grant you true peace. So people do drugs. So people falling into something else. They suffer physical suffering. Not only that, one of our multi-ethnic members told me, she told me a a prayer topic to pray for this one little child who's only 10 years old. He's only 10 years old and he's trying to commit suicide. 
Do you think that's a normal? But you know what? This is what's happening. This is the norm of this world in these days. 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, little kids, now they're having desire to quit their lives. Why do they want to quit their lives? Because they are suffering. If you're only 10, what did you do when you were 10? What did we do when we were 10? Time to enjoy. You don't need to worry about anything. Yet nowadays, they want to quit their lives. They want to stop their life. They're living their life as if they're living in hell. And their problems that they inherit from their parents. And they suffer every single day. And my question is this, Lord, when are you going to bless me? When he's showing me all people how they're dying, and the evangelism door is never open to me, I can barely remember when I evangelized. Yet I'm not irritated by it, all, by it at all. God doesn't open the door for evangelism. I don't care. What I care, God, when are you going to bless me? When are you going to bless me physically and financially? If you're God, if you're God of God, when are you going to make me number one in the world? When everyone's dying. We were just like a beast before God. God, how come I'm so short? I believe in Jesus Christ. I evangelize. When are you going to make me tall? Father, I never want to look like a monkey anymore. So I believe in Christ. When are you going to change my face? This is what we are asking, guys. We are very primitive. We're just like a beast to God. When everyone's dying, God, I'm about to change my phone. Can you please change my phone? If God doesn't allow you, you fight with your mom. If you cannot get what you desire, you're just suffering and you're rending your garments and your hearts because of what you want. Here, they're suffering at the same time. They don't know what to hear. They're listening to the knowledge of the world. They're depending on the sound of the world. And they're creating their culture of life. That's very attractive. That's really tempting. You know what Christians are these days praying? They can't even pray to the point that they want to save them. They're just praying. Father God, give me a heart to go away from all the worldly things. They can't even think of go into and save all of this. Christians are always repenting to God. God, I'm sorry I did the drugs. God, I'm sorry I watched porn. God, I'm sorry I cheated, cheated, on, cheated when I was taking tests. God, I'm sorry. We are repenting for all the material things. When your hearts and your souls are away from what God cares. They're living for themselves. Living for, they're dying for their flesh. And they are creating success. And this culture of the world they are advertising you every single day by saying, buy me, invest your time in me, invest your money in me, use all who you are to enjoy who we are. And they are suffering. They're dying. What does God desire? What does he want? 
Joel chapter 2, verse 31, 32. Everyone who calls on the, on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. God desired to save you. How did he do it? He didn't ask. But he broke the force of darkness. From the beginning, the woman's offspring will crush the devil's head. He desired to forgive all your sin. And he died. He became sin who knew no sin for our sake. He became a way for us. He loved you guys. Amen. If he loved you, what else do you need? If he's with you, what else do you need? If he's with you, with you always, all the time, in any time, why do we need our plan? Why do we need our method? If God is with me. If the almighty God is with me, why do I need to care about my power or my position? If God is with me, what am I losing? We're not losing anything because God is with me. Repent is not something we just repent with our mouth through our words that we use. Repent is to build a system that you'd never go back to your old frame. It's a system of a new frame. Build your system for your summit time. Believing in Jesus. Every day, find your time to confirm your faith in Jesus. Every day, find your time to confirm, to live your life by Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, live by Jesus. Find your summit time to pray in Jesus' name. If you believe in Jesus, live by Jesus. Pray in Jesus' name. Find the summit time to proclaim Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, live by Jesus, pray in Jesus. And so the content of our evangelism is proclaim Jesus. Build a system and your system that you have created by the grace of God, will be the culture. This will be the platform for all will see you and they will all join you. From the work, they will come to you. From your school, they will ask you. Whatever you do, they will come. They want to be with you. God will attach everyone to you. And you will be a door for evangelism. And God will use you as an instrument to save all. So remnants, be ready to stand before the king. Be ready, for stands. Be ready to stand before the president of this age, king of this age, and give them the answer. Have a God to give and proclaim Jesus is a Christ to the king of this age, to the king of this world. Proclaim Jesus is a Christ no matter what it is. May you restore the system for the sake of the kingdom of God. Let's have a time to praise remnants. And as we sing a song, really pray to God. God, restore me your word. Restore me your prayer that you want me to pray.
Restore me your desire in my heart. Rend my garments, rend my heart. Not for my sake, but for your sake. Father, if you really care about saving one's soul, open the door for evangelism for me. God, although we're weak, we're not knowledgeable enough, but we want to share and we want to proclaim Jesus is a Christ the answer to all, to the dying soul, to the dying environment, to the dying emotion, to the dying circumstance. I want to proclaim Jesus is a Christ the answer to all, to the dying nation, to a dying society, to a dying family. I want to confess, Jesus, you are the Christ. You're the son of the living God. God's people are scattered all around. For the Lord has sent us all ahead of time. But when the Lord calls us together, we shall see His covenant in us restored. For in this dark world full of idols, all the people have lost all their hope. But when the Spirit comes, like the power of the wind, they will hear and receive the Lord. Let us rise, all you scatter as a remnant. Let us shine the light of Jesus to the world of night. In the nations of the world, let us rise and shine for Jesus, for we are His remnant. God's people are scattered. God's people are scattered all around. For the Lord has sent a song ahead of time but when the lord calls us together we shall see his covenant in us restore for in this dark world full of idols all the people have lost all their hope but when the Spirit comes, like the power of the wind, they will hear and we see the Lord. Let us rise, all you scatter as a remnant. Let us shine the light of Jesus to the world. I'll confess one more time. God's people are scattered all around. For the Lord has sent us on ahead of time. Restore this covenant. God's people are scattered all around. For the Lord has sent us on ahead of time. But when the Lord calls us together, we 
shall see his covenant in us restore for in this dark world for by those all the people have lost all their hope father give us heart what breaks your heart like the power of the wind they will hear and we see the lord let us rise all you scatter as a remnant let us shine the light of jesus to the world of night in the nations of the world let us rise and shine for jesus for we are his Let us rise, all you scatter as a remnant. Let us shine the light of Jesus to the world of night. In the nations of the world, let us rise and shine for Jesus, for we are his remnant. Father God, really thank you so much. For in the midst and midst of time, the people are dying. Where is my heart? Why would I break my heart? If I rent my garments and my heart, what are they for? Father, it is for the desire of evangelism. For the long amount of time, we were away from you. We were away from listening to your word. We can barely remember we can we ever pray to God. When was the last time you opened the door of evangelism for us? Father, we were so ignorant before you. We were just like a beast. We were no more better than any other animals out there. We seeing others dying. And we were even laughing at them dying. And we might be happy seeing them dying. Because if they're dying, we will gain what they lost. This is how much we are ignorant. We were just a beast before you, Lord. You called us for your sake, but I live just for my sake. Build us your system. Build us your spiritual system that will establish the kingdom of God. Father, every day in our lives, allow us a time to believe in you, proclaim you. Let us be the platform and culture of this age. To save this age, raise us to stand before the king of this age. Father, fill us with the Holy Spirit to proclaim Jesus is a Christ. Even at our loss, you are the Christ. Even before our death, you are the Christ. Let us rise, all you scatter, as a remnant, shine the light of Jesus to the world of night. In the nations of the world, let us shine it. 
Jesus, for we are His remnant. Let us rise. Let us rise, all you scatter as a remnant. Let us shine the light of Jesus to the world of night. In the nations of the world, let us rise and shine for Jesus. For we, we are your remnants. Let us rise. Let us rise, all you scatter as a remnant. Let us shine the light of Jesus to the world of night. In the nations of the world, let us rise and shine for Jesus. For we are His remnant. For we are His remnant. For we are Your remnants. For we are His Father, we don't really remember how many times we make a resolution that we're going to live for you, but we fail our resolution every single day. If it were not you who called us, we can't stand here. We fail every single day. We lose your covenant if we were not you. We will be demolished. We will be destroyed forever. You have restored us. Today you called us to return to you. We come for you. We come for the kingdom of God. Now we make another resolution of faith. Father, let my life. Be the life of the evangelist, giving our life for you alone. Give us strength to give all what we have. Just for the church, just for world evangelization. Father, we repent. For not seeing the desire of yours. We repent. For every single thing that we compromise within the kingdom of God. Restore us, recover us, recreate us with a system that will never let us go back. It is your covenant that is steadfast, that is everlasting. So we believe in your covenant and we confess your covenant and we proclaim your covenant. Thank you. Thank you, really. Thank you, inviting us into the stream of your covenant and this evangelism and this light. Thank you so much. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ.